UFC Hall of Fame celebrates some of the most influential fighters in MMA history, and Matt Serra. But in the 18 years since its formation, there's one glaring omission from its walls. Today, we look at one of the most dominant and influential fighters in the sport. One who, thanks to a public feud with Dana White, will never get the recognition he deserves. Welcome to the INC, and this is the story of Frank Shamrock. The mental strength that defined Frank Shamrock was evident from the very beginning. Frank Juarez III endured a troubled upbringing. Abused by his parents, the young Frank bounced between foster homes in a childhood marred by constant run-ins with the law, before being taken in by Susanville native Bob Shamrock. Frank formally took the Shamrock surname at the age of 21, and soon after began training alongside his brother Ken at his Lion's Den training camp. The younger Shamrock accompanied Ken to several of his fights before stepping into the ring himself in 1994 where he beat future legend Bass Rutten for the Pancraze promotion in Japan. Shamrock's early career played out almost exclusively in Pancraze. Despite his lack of experience, Shamrock found success against some of the sport's first pioneers, including wins over Minoru Suzuki and Vernon White. But Ken's mainstream success made the younger Shamrock appear second-rate in comparison, especially as Frank ended his company tenure with three losses in his last four fights. It was turmoil closer to home, however, that proved the turning point of Frank's career. In 1997, a falling out with Ken over his training methods led Shamrock to form a new camp with Maurice Smith and kickboxer Javier Mendez. Originally dubbed Shamrock Submission Fighting, the group was renamed the American Kickboxing Academy, which has gone on to become one of the most dominant training camps in modern MMA. The new team immediately found success as three wins, including the second round stoppage of Edson Inui in Tokyo, earned Shamrock a shot at the newly created UFC light heavyweight title, known back then as the middleweight title. Shamrock's opponent was former Olympic gold medalist Kevin Jackson, who entered the fight unbeaten and a massive favorite against his undersized opponent. It took just 16 seconds for Shamrock to rewrite the rulebook. While most MMA fighters at the time were specialists with rudimentary training in other disciplines, Shamrock was MMA's first true all-rounder, often adapting his training around specific opponents with a key emphasis on conditioning. Shamrock's professionalism made him one of the UFC's biggest figureheads in their battle against Senator John McCain, whose campaign against the sport saw it blacklisted in America. Shamrock's first title defense came against unbeaten Russian Igor Zinoviev, touted as one of the few men capable of posing a threat to the champion. Like he did against Jackson, Shamrock wasted no time answering the critics. Oh my! He's out! He's out cold! He's out cold! He dropped him on his head, he's out cold! Shamrock's win broke the record for the fastest knockout in light heavyweight title history, a record that still remains to this day. Zinoviev, meanwhile, was left with a broken collarbone and suffered several cracked vertebrae, forcing him to retire from the sport and take another role void of any kind of scandal or controversy. Shamrock continued his dominance, submitting grappling ace Jeremy Horn before avenging one of his previous losses against John Lober. Shamrock was beginning to look unbeatable in the octagon, but the biggest test of his career was just around the corner. At UFC 22, Shamrock made his fourth title defense against rising prospect Tito Ortiz, who entered the fight off convincing wins over Lions Den veterans Guy Metzger and Jerry Bolander. While Shamrock competed at his walk-around weight, Ortiz often cut over 20 pounds to make the 200-pound weight limit, with many fearing his size advantage would be too much for Shamrock. What followed is still considered one of the greatest fights of the pre-Zufa era, with Ortiz spamming multiple takedowns and Shamrock using an effective guard to pepper away at his opponent. The pace of the fight was soon taking its toll on Ortiz, allowing Shamrock to mount a dramatic comeback and claim the biggest win of his MMA career. And he's and down! It's over! What a gutsy performance by the champ! The MMA community was unanimous in its praise for Shamrock after the fight, with UFC co-founder Bob Meyerowitz describing him as the greatest fighter in UFC history. 
Shamrock's post-fight interview therefore took many in the sport by surprise. You know, originally I came here, I came here to challenge myself, to fight all comers, and I feel like I've done that. I mean, who's left? You know, I'm good right now, just retiring my belt, concentrating on my marriage. I think I'm going to leave this belt in the ring here for the next crew to pick up and retire my title tonight. Shamrock's retirement didn't stop him from being associated with the UFC. Working as a commentator on the first Zufa shows and continuing his role as a trainer, where he helped guide the early career of BJ Penn. But despite several attempts from new UFC president Dana White, Shamrock refused to return to the Octagon, reportedly turning down a record payday for a rematch with newly crowned champion Ortiz. Shamrock was released from his commentary duties after UFC 32, and in 20 years since has never returned to the promotion. When Shamrock finally returned to action, he did so with the upstart WEC promotion, beating Brian Pardue to win the company's light heavyweight title, before later headlining the first events for Elite XC and Strikeforce. By this point, however, Shamrock's age was starting to catch up with him. Many of the training methods he pioneered were being utilized more effectively by younger and more aggressive fighters. In 2008, Shamrock suffered his first stoppage loss in 12 years after breaking his arm during a match with Kung Lee, before facing former UFC veteran Nick Diaz in Strikeforce's first event on Showtime. Diaz dominated Shamrock for the majority of the fight, landing several minutes of ground and pound before Big John McCarthy stopped the bout late in the second round. After the fight, Diaz helped a wounded Shamrock to his feet, telling the former champion, you're a legend. Legends don't stay on the ground. After several months of speculation, Shamrock formally announced his retirement from the sport, boasting an MMA record of 23 wins, 10 losses, and 2 draws. Seven of those losses coming in the first three years of his pro career. Despite his accolades, Shamrock remained on bad terms with UFC president Dana White. During a social media Q&A in 2010, Shamrock claimed White would be the only person he'd be willing to come out of retirement to fight and believing the UFC's monopoly on MMA was hampering the growth of the sport. It's safe to say White didn't take kindly to the accusations. Frank Shamrock, Betty didn't tell you to say on your radio show that he flew out to my office a month ago, sat down with me and tried to make peace with me. Did he tell you that? No. That's weird. I wonder why he didn't tell that, because you're a two-faced lion chump. That's what you are, Frank Shamrock. You're not going to do anything to get anything. What have you done for mixed martial arts in the last 10 years? What have you done? You haven't done anything. You're just a liar and a guy who's trying to keep himself relevant. By 2017, it appeared White and Shamrock's beef was starting to thaw. According to former UFC PR man Ant Evans, the company teased inducting Shamrock's match with Ortiz into their Hall of Fame, with Shamrock expressing strong interest in appearing at the ceremony. As the event drew closer, Shamrock's communication became more sporadic, and after Shamrock conducted an interview criticizing the UFC's business practices, the plans were quietly dropped. A press release announcing the induction was never released and Shamrock remains uninducted at the time of this recording. There's no denying Shamrock's importance to MMA, an innovator of coaching and training who found success in every promotion he competed in, as well as being an active figure in helping the sport's growth in America. If anything, however, it's the latter that proved his undoing, as the UFC looked down on a man going out of his way to help their biggest competition. Calls for Shamrock's induction will continue as long as the UFC is around, but don't be surprised if it's another decade before an MMA legend finally gets his recognition. This is the INC. Like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell so you never miss a video.